Coronavirus in Nigeria is causing rift between two major political parties. And Catholics in the country are protesting the killings of Nigerians by Boko Haram terrorists and kidnappers. They demand the president speaks out. This is Plus Politics and I am Felicity Hezewike. You're welcome. The announcement of the first case of the coronavirus might have caused a wave of panic among Nigerians, but it certainly has not stopped our leaders from bickering at each other. While the All Progressive Congress APC has warned the PDP against politicizing the occurrence, the opposition party has expressed worry at what it described as President Muhammad Buhari's delay in addressing the panic that has been caused by the development. In addition to this, the spokesperson to President Muhammad Buhari, Garaba Shew, expressed his displeasure with the Nigerian media coverage of the coronavirus compared to that of malaria. Joining us in the studio are two legal practitioners. I'll start with Moses Akbasubi. Thank you very much for coming on the program. It's a pleasure. And of course, we have a familiar face, Obi Adjegbo. Thank you very much for coming on the program. Okay, so comments, PDP, APC. Um, the need for the president to address the people. Is there a need? Uh, may I just start with saying, is the PDP's comment out of place? And is the APC response at par? Let me start with you, um, Moses. Yeah, I thank you very much. I want to say at this junction that this is not a time where politics takes the place of reality in our political system. This is virus and this is a danger between life and death. It has nothing to do with any political affiliation. The president owes us a duty to address the nation on the state of the medical facilities available to the country. Where before now, it was on the news that we are ready. The Nigerian government have put the necessary machineries in place to curtail and control coronavirus. I would have expected that on discovering of this um, coronavirus, it, was, it, should have been, it should have taken a more delayed tactics approach than what we are seeing today in Nigeria. But, but there are some that are actually complementary of the effort of the government so far, because this is the first case, the only case in Nigeria. And I mean, m I had a guest here um, last week that said, um, he gives a pass mark to the Lagos State government in particular. Yes, that is Lagos State government. The Federal Airport Authority is owned by the Federal Government of Nigeria. What, you see, let, let me, let, let's, not, let's not get this thing, uh, 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 let's, not, let's not get it twisted. Assuming, just assume that Nigeria, this uh, virus originated from Nigeria. Do you think any black man can travel out of this country without proper scrutiny? And even if he eventually passes the, the rigorous exercise of uh, scrutinization, what happens when you get to their airport internationally? Would you be allowed to cross the airport without any measure of detention or being quarantined within the airport premises? It's a failure part of our government. All right, let's it's bring a failure. O o Obi in. Do you, do you agree that there is a need? Uh, let's look away from the reaction or who the messenger is right now. Is there a need for the president to address the nation? considering the fact that the Ministry of Health has had press conferences. I'm surprised at PDP, because they know Mr. President doesn't address anybody. So why would they expect it to be different in, with this one? In situations where more lives have been lost, did he address anybody? Did he go there? Did he send anybody to commiserate with them? So, but PDP is in line because he's the president, he's the father of the nation. The, the Minister of Health has, spoke, has spoken who he designated to handle it, who is his portfolio. But he, as the president, needs to tell us, hey, my people, don't worry, everything is in control. Again, some would argue that there doesn't seem to be that much of an urgency considering, of course, that you just mentioned he has agencies handling uh, this situation. So is it really pertinent? I ask, because um, as much as people are saying he should speak, they're saying, what more is he going to say that the Ministry of Health hasn't already said? He's the president. 
this is a new virus that is alien to us. When, when it hit Lagos, everybody went berserk. Um, supermarkets were selling off their sanitizers and um, masks and everything. It was, it, was, it was an uproar. That's when I was expecting him to announce to us that be calm, everything is in control. But it's only, it's only Son Wolu that I heard that was addressing people. He, as a president, is expected to talk to us. But I must say there was a report I read um, yesterday or today that was saying that um, they, they are on top of it. Okay, let me come back to you, Mrs. You said um, that uh, the conversation should be more focused on other issues other than politics at this time. But some say such comments are important at this time. And you do agree that there is a need for the president to address, yes. uh, address the yes, people. So yes. um, is this good for our polity, not politics now, to some say it helps to keep the government on its toes? Yes. If, if, if the, the president is our father, is the father of the nation. Now, assuming if a child needs something from the father and the father keeps mute about that particular request, what do you expect, expect that child to be thinking? His mind will go bizarre. Now, we are all expecting that the president to, should come out and address the extent of the medical facilities on ground. It is not enough to start telling people stop. People were already panicking. Nigerians are panicking already. So it is out of place for you to be telling Nigerians, don't panic. We are Nigeria. You see, one thing I've discovered with this government is that we are they are always on top of the situation. Meanwhile, the situation in recent is on top of the government. Because I would have expected coronavirus broke out in December 2019. I, 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 I would have expected that upon anybody arriving at the shore of this country, proper scrutiny ought to have taken place. Do you know, I read this morning that the, 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 the Italian has had contact with over 100 Nigerians. How yeah. do you trace that? They, they have, uh, at least, yes. let, let, let's, let's give them How a benefit of doubt that? on the fact that they have assured us that everyone that has had contact with um, that Italian has been quarantined. For now, let's take their word for it and why we watch. We still have like another 14 days to know what is going to happen with this particular case. And we do know that there is a ray of hope somehow mm -hmm. that China has found the cure and they're sharing that information with us. How valid that is as of this moment, we cannot tell because we have just yes. one. My, my, so, my, 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 my contention is this. Why is it that Nigeria always partake in every negative aspect of any outbreak? I asked a question earlier. Just assume that this problem broke out from Africa or Nigeria. Do you think any Western world will receive any black man at this present critical time? We are discussing. Well, well I, I think our that... Airports, our airports, there are so many lapses. Uh, but we, we, there is information at the moment that more personnel are going to be, uh, medical personnel are going to be deployed to the airports. But we'll get to that That's in a bit. supposed to be the starting point. Uh, let, we'll get to that in a bit. I want to talk to us still on our preparedness. I want to talk to, um, I want you to talk to us about uh, this uh, recent report. There is a report, an investigative piece by uh, Punch. One wouldn't say it's too much of an investigation, just confirmation of what is on the ground in uh, the federal capital territory. They went to the hospital that was designated as the isolation uh, that will house the isolation, um, I beg your pardon, isolation center for coronavirus. But as of, uh, as at the time that report was published, which is today, um, the center was still being built, right? Um, some of the medical staff there said they have not been briefed. They don't have details as to measures that they're supposed to take if this should uh, happen. But this, if you just oppose this with what the Ministry of Health has been telling us, that a lot of persons have been trained and they will be deployed, they have been deployed in some cases to other parts. Does it worry you that this is our federal capital territory? If, we, if other parts are not ready, shouldn't our federal capital territory be in peak form, and if not more than what Lagos currently presents? Um, I'm not worried. First of all. Secondly, you see the time between which money is disbursed and the time you um, everything is put in place, there, there, there's a bit of a time 
gap. And we know that these monies were, were released, was it January or February? Do you understand? Okay. So, so that's, that's one thing. I'm not, I'm not here to hold brief for the federal government, but what I know is that Lagos State, which I am based in, is prepared. Abuja will catch up. Other parts of the country will catch up. But, but isn't, it, isn't, it, isn't it something of a concern that we've had December, January, February, this is March. Second. When when was the budget? It's not it's not a should we it's, be it's, talking it's about, about budget about at budget. this time? This is or an the extraordinary and emergency situation. I'm not holding brief for this the is an extraordinary and emergency Sir, situation I that am, requires no protocol. I'm not holding brief for the government. But what I'm saying is they will get there. Okay, let's, let's look at, uh, there are indications that uh, I mentioned earlier that the federal government is drafting uh, more medical personnel to uh, the country's airports to help with the screening of international passengers, which is one of your concern mm -hmm. about how we are uh, treating our borders. Um, the president of the NMA has come up to say that there is need to provide adequate um, personnel protective equipment for those that will be deployed uh, to these areas. There's been worries about efforts with the border. How reassuring does this information um, uh, come as to you? Because you just expressed concern about, you know, people leaving the country or coming into the country without proper screening. Uh, the Ministry of Health says they are screening. They're, I mean, at least what we know for a fact is that there is a form at the uh, airports for people to fill up where they are, their state, and all of that so they can be traced. Does this information about more medical personnel being deployed to our country's international airports and some border points reassure you? Yes, what my, my, my contention is still this. Why do we need to wait or have to wait for an, for an, for an issue to happen before we take proactive measure, before we take measure? What should Can't have we been be proactive? done? What, what should, should have been done? Because we no, didn't no, have coronavirus just, just until last week, yes, for instance. Yes, until last week, but you know that, you and I know that, it took China three weeks to build medical facilities. Nobody, nobody premeditated this. Nobody expected this. But upon the information that yes, corona, coronavirus is on the is, is out, it took China three weeks to build their medical facilities where and how they quarantine the people that were suspected to be virus to the, to the virus carrier. You're basically saying now, more now, means. now we you we are talking about drafting medical personnel to the airports. Another issue that would come to our mind again, this medical personnel, what are their insurance policies? What are their insurance cover? I remember when Ebola came. I remember when um, Ebola came and I know so many people were used as a sacrificial lamp to quarantine people and to treat people and to ensure that the virus God does not go beyond a certain measure. If you go deep down today, you discover that the families of those people who sacrificed their lives for Ebola to be contained have been abandoned. Now, how do you now, what, what are the safety measures? What are, assuming these people who are drafted to the airport to work for the federal government get infested at the end of the day and they lost their lives, what medical fertilities, what are the, what are the insurance policy puts on ground for their families? Okay, I, I think you've issues, made your you point on sir, that. Can, yes. I, can, can I say something? Okay. My worry is not about the international airports. It's those land borders. The places in Katsina, um, up north, that are so porous that you can just walk in without having anything. Imagine if they, if they had it in Chad or in Niger. It, it would just walk into Nigeria. That's my main concern. The airports, Lagos, um, Abuja, Port Harcourt will be fortified because that's the main point of entry. Everybody is looking at, yes, whoever has it is flying in. But you know, as of last week, we were saying they should start banning some airlines from coming into Nigeria. Airlines that still fly from China should be banned from coming into Nigeria. But nobody did anything about it. So that would be bad for our economy. That's um, some of the reaction that has come from the federal government via the Ministry of Health. That, um, as at this point, it would be too hasty to begin to ban international oh, flights. Other countries. Chinese have done GDP it. has dropped drastically. Yeah, but the case in China is th that is the origin. Yes. So one would expect that they would do 
Yeah, they will have speedy reactions I, like I that. But we just have one case of coronavirus. And from all indications, they're working to ensure that he doesn't spread. But those, those, those measures, are they still necessary at this time? Or should they be on the standby? Should we have an increase? They should be on the standby. Because you, you see, we have a population of, of over 100 million. And we have people that their hygienic conditions Leave, needs a lot to be desired. So can you imagine if coronavirus enters somewhere like a Jigule, what will happen? So we have to, we have to take measures. The, this is now the time for the National Orientation Organization or whatever, National Orientation Agency. Agency, to go around sensitizing people, telling them about this thing, telling them what to do and what not to do. Okay, Let, let's take another angle to this conversation because aside the APC and the PDP thing, there's been some reaction. Um, let me, let, before I go to those reactions, I want to ask you, what's your assessment of media coverage of the coronavirus? If you ask me, the media coverage is not doing enough. I say this with all sense of responsibility because... Um, there is an autonomy, there's an autonomy granted to the media to perform their constitutional role. So the media should not be intimidated or harassed by any functional government of, of Nigeria. There is a constitutional provision for every media houses in which they are supposed. Imagine if not for the media houses, our voice will not, wouldn't, will not go beyond the roof of this building. We still need the media. Yeah, but in the case of the no coverage of this coronavirus. Yes, we, we, have not, they, we are not doing enough. You and I, we, you are here in the, in the city. We, have we bothered to talk about those in rural areas, those in the villages? That's what I was saying. How do we like sensitize? National. How do we communicate? People, pass it, people still How do we reach out to these people? By foot into Ogun State. Those are, those are where we have to be careful, into yes. Ogun State. All these border places that are not... The, we those, have loved ones in the villages. But what, what about we, it? What yeah, I, I was actually about? going somewhere with that question, mm -hmm. and that has to do with also the tackling of fake news. The other day we had um, a young man came out to debunk um, a, a, a news report yeah. from a, a seemingly credible source that he was the um, driver of the Italian guy. And the man says he has never been to Lagos, in the, he has not been to Lagos, rather, in the past two years. Mm -hmm. So he wondered how he would have been uh, the driver. And that was quickly uh, discarded on its merit. We've also seen fake WhatsApp messages about how you can cure coronavirus. That was immediately, you, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, counted. You know, so in that regard, how would you rate, you know, the media on this? And of course, the proactive measures of government in responding to some of the issues that has to do with the coronavirus? You see, when government, you see, I'm, I'm very delighted when something appears on social media and within the next 20, 30 minutes, the, the government has replied. It makes me happy. And I must commend the media, the TV and the print, they did a good job of sensitizing people. What they are telling us is this is how you can combat it, this is how you can do it, which is good. Many of us, we are ignorant of it. So it's very, very good. But fake news has to be filtered. Okay. Let's go to another dimension of what the media has been covering. This time, there is a government spokesman who is unhappy with how the media is covering um, uh, the coronavirus and his response. I'd like to read it. Um, it's uh, from the spokesperson to President Buhari Garba Shew. I would like to read exactly what he wrote. He said, this morning's newspapers, all of them have coronaviruses, a virus as the lead cover story. When will they bring the spotlight to bear on 822 who are killed by malaria every day in Nigeria? So my question is, does he have a point, or is he deliberately trying to cause a distraction, as some have said? As far as I'm concerned, Gaba Shehu does not have a point in this regard. You see, people are trying to... He's been economical with the truth. That's, 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 the, that's, the, that's, the, that's the whole truth, because you cannot just oppose malaria and uh, an outbreak who just what, that just came out 
few months ago. But, but the fact that we, we are used to the existence of malaria, even though it's still killing people, does it reduce the fact again that it kills people? As malaria as malaria well. still kills people, but the difference between coronavirus and malaria is that you can walk up to the nearest chemist store and get any malaria uh, uh, treatment to get to buy and two few one or two days you are up and going and you are okay but this is this is an outbreak that we are no certified medication has been approved to say oh this is why will you not tell people not to be panicked every sensible and well-meaning nigeria ought to panic because i feel i feel our government is not still doing enough all right, um, Obi, you, not doing enough. Your, your, your thought on this, um, Ghana yeah. Shiru's comment, you know, that we're, we're underreporting what's happening with uh, malaria and focusing so you much know, on when, coronavirus. When you were talking about malaria, what came to my mind is who is the architect of your own problem? They are. Millions have been given out to stop the malaria scourge, to taper it, to, 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 to hinder it. And yet, you now have the gods to tell us that 882 people die every day. So what happened to the billions? And you are proud, of, and you are proud to tell Nigerians okay. that. Uh, I'm told we have uh, very little time. So I'm going to go back to the premise on which this conversation started before we started looking at other angles. And that's the conversation that is emanating from the APC and the PDP. What kind of conversation? Let, let, me, let me come back to you, uh, Obi. Mm. In your opinion, should our political parties be engaging at this crucial time in the country? The PDP should put pressure on the APC to do more. Should they be putting pressure at this time? Yes, they should because it is. It, uh, if if we can get if, if by the time somebody comes in with coronavirus at our borders, and we detect it then most of it is done. It is when they come into town and start mingling with people, people that we don't have their address, we don't have their contacts. It is, you see, in certain parts of Nigeria, it is difficult to have contacts and to know where people are. So if you, le if you leave somebody who is, who is not documented to mix with coronavirus, it's, it's, um, it's going to be a recipe for disaster. Your take, what kind of conversation should political parties be having at this time? I have said it often and I will repeat it again that political parties should put their differences aside and face the issue at stake. The president of Nigeria, all Nigerian um, um, safety of their heads. One of the primary duties of government is to protect lives and property. Now, if you are talking about protection of lives, do you, are you not going to start giving excuses that PDP is accusing my political party that I am not doing well? This is the time you have to be blindfolded, you have to deaf your eardrum and look at the tactical way of approaching this problem and get it solved. That is my take. This is not the time to start trading words. PDP, fine, PDP is there as, um, as, a, as, as, as a watchdog. To the, to the ruling party, it, that, it, that is, does not mean that anything PDP says, P, APC will make words out of it. If they are making words out of it, it should be on a correctional note. Okay, I almost forgot this question uh, just before we wrap up. Um, there is a, um, a conversation at the moment about revealing the name of the Italian who has the coronavirus. Is that information really relevant, considering the fact that the ministry says um, it's against medical uh, ethics, ethics. Yeah. Um, uh, that's what he said. Mm -hmm. But a senator of this Federal Republic um, is saying that if it were in other climes, we would know the name of the person who has the virus, including that of his extended in family. All, in other climes, they have more constrained people. If they know that guy, nobody knows what will happen to him. I'm sorry, because some people are bitter that he brought this thing into Nigeria. Is that so, enough for reason to keep his name private? It, uh, uh, we have to follow medical ethics. All right. I must say thank you very much for your time on the program so far. Thank you. I'll be back with you in a bit, but let's go on a quick break. And when we return, some are not happy with the silence of President Buhari when it comes to insecurity in this country. That's up for conversation after this break.